Oh, hi. Welcome back to the YouTube channel of the Ethiopian Society. I'm Mark Green, and uh, really appreciate your being with me today. Um, I'm enjoying some pie um, because today is Pie Day, 3.14 or March 14th. So um, it's kind of a, a mathematical joke, the, the constant pie um, expressed as a date, but it's also an opportunity to eat some pie, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Um, pie Day is also Albert Einstein's birthday, and so it's celebrated by many atheists as an opportunity just to reflect on the kind of uh, critical thinking and scientific analysis, as well as the sort of big picture wonder that Albert Einstein embodied. Um, and that is an example of a created holiday. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about created holidays. Um, in paganism generally and in atheopaganism specifically, we talk a lot about the, uh, the wheel of the year, right? The eight Sabbaths of the wheel of the year, you know, solstices, equinoxes, and the points in between. But there are a lot of other times when we can celebrate as well. Atheopaganism is about creating meaning and joy and celebration in your life, and so more holidays is good, right? So let's dive in and talk about some of them. We've talked about Pi Day, which I'm enjoying today, and here are some others that you can celebrate around the year. Uh, the first one, starting in January, is SLOG, which is all caps, S-L-O-G-G. -G. It doesn't stand for anything, it just sort of, it's all caps because it reflects what a slog it is to get through late January, into February uh, in many parts of the world where it's cold and dark and wet and just very uncomfortable. And so I invented a holiday for the third Saturday in January called Slog. And in Slog you wear funny hats, drink mulled wine or mulled cider, something like that, um, and uh, sit around in cozy, comfy clothing uh, playing board games. And that's all. That's all that it's about. Uh, but it's an opportunity to take a break, not bother to put your clothes on that day, uh, and just uh, enjoy some warming beverages and uh, have a good time with uh, friends or family. So that's Slog in January. The next one uh, that I'd like to talk about is Tau Day. Oh, actually, no, I should go back. Um, Yuri's Day. Yuri's Night, actually, which is April 12th. Yuri's Night is a celebration of space exploration. And it is the anniversary of the first human entering space. Yuri Gagarin, uh, in 1961, orbited the Earth. Uh, he was a Soviet cosmonaut, and he orbited the Earth um, and was the first to experience what they call the overlook effect, which is the incredibly transporting and meaningful experience of seeing the whole earth below him. Um, and uh, so we remember Yuri and we remember all the other people who have gone to space or who have died in the effort to go to space on that night. Um, there are many museums like aerospace museums and um, natural history museums or planetariums that have special celebrations on Yuri's night. So you might want to look into your area and see if there's something going on, or you can do your own. Uh, but if you're excited about uh, the exploration of space, then it's something that you can do as well. The next is Tau Day. And Tau Day sounds kind of like Pi Day, right? Well, it should, because tau, the Greek letter tau, is the mathematical constant of 2 pi. And the great thing about tau day, which is June 28th, right, 6 to 8, June 28th, is uh, you get twice as much pi. So what's wrong with that? Uh, the next that uh, we can skip forward to is um, November 8th, which is Carl Sagan's birthday. Um, sometimes Ethiopagans call themselves Sagan's Pagans because a lot of what we embody is the, the sense of just wonder and revelry that Carl Sagan had at the scientific discovery of the world. Um, he was not only a great astronomer, he was also a science educator um, with his great uh, public television series Cosmos and um, his wonderful books. 
And so the kind of wonder and joy and uh, just sheer feeling of magic of the universe that we have as Ethiopaganisms, is, as Ethiopagans, is something that Carl Sagan very much embodied. And so on November 9th, his birthday, um, sometimes we light a candle, raise a toast, pour a libation, something for Carl, um, because he did a lot for us. His books actually brought a lot of thinking out into the world that helped to inform the creation of Ethiopaganism. So that's November 9th. And that then moves us into the dense holiday season, which gets denser with some of these new ones, like Wolfenut. Wolfenut is November 23rd, and it was created by a seven-year-old and took off. And now it's a thing that a lot of people celebrate around the world. And what it is is the celebration of dogs and wolves, and you uh, have a moon-shaped cake and give presents to dogs and wolves, um, and you're very nice to one another. And that's the holiday. That's what you do it. It's about dogs. It's about our, our companionship and relationship with dogs and wolves over the, the tens of thousands of years that we've had that relationship, and about celebrating by eating a moon cake. And no hate, just snoot boops is the motto of Wolf and Newt. So no hate, just snoot boops. Um, next uh, comes Festivus. Uh, obviously, December is dense with all kinds of holidays that you can choose to uh, celebrate. But Festivus is kind of a special one to me because it's funny. Um, it was originally proposed in an episode of Seinfeld, which I've never actually watched. But basically, this is a, a holiday on December 23rd when you erect aluminum, an aluminum pole and, then, and have a dinner with your friends and family at which you air grievances and then have feats of strength. Uh, and then that's, that's it for Festivus. Um, so uh, my partner and I actually do have a, an aluminum pole that we put up every year and we air our grievances about, you know, whatever has happened over the course of the last year. And to be honest, it helps you feel better, gets you ready for a nice clean slate for the new year. So that's a nice thing. So these are just some suggestions. You can create your own holidays that are meaningful for you, and that will be a great thing to add to your calendar. Um, the, the opportunity to uh, identify what's meaningful to you or amusing to you or fun for you, um, and then to enshrine that into a day that makes sure that it happens at least once a year, is a, a, a ritual practice. It's just as much a ritual practice as celebrating the stations of the wheel of the year. So I invite you to be thinking about, you know, what are the special days for me? What, what are the, the things that I think I should be celebrating around the year? And to enshrine that into a holiday of your own. Um, I invite you to uh, put any special holidays that you've created in the comments. Uh, please, uh, hit subscribe and like for this video. Um, more subscribers is good for us, so we really appreciate it. Um, I'm Mark Green, and thank you so much for being with me today. Take care.